just want to make it, you know, a big atmosphere again for us. I think if, um, if you've ever missed football so much over the last few years and, and you miss big games, I think every game now for us from now until the end of the season is a huge game. Um, you know, we're in a fantastic position. Come and watch us, come and get behind us and, and you know, get us over the line and, and, it, and it starts Saturday. Um, so, you know, we need everyone behind us, like we had last home game. Um, and like, like we've always said, uh, these lads run themselves into the ground and they deserve a big crowd, they deserve um, people to get behind them and, and, you know, we just want to keep moving forward. Ooh, it gives me shivers. It's so inspiring. Um, welcome to the Shaken Up Show, Playing Away, episode 23. I'm Johnny Greenalsh, and tonight's guest is Mark Ashmore, the media volunteer from AFC Blackpool. Before we bring him on, I just want to let you know that coach tickets for this weekend's trip to Blackpool are on sale at berryafc.uk forward slash tickets. Uh, and tickets for the game are available via Blackpool's ticket portal, which we will post in the description below the video. But let's get cracking. Mark, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Brilliant, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. So um, we may as well crack straight into it. Can you uh, introduce yourself and tell us how you got involved at AFC Blackpool? Yeah, so my name's Mark. Um, I do all the media at AFC Blackpool along with... Um, a young lad called Nathan. Um, been at the club two seasons now. Was previously at Squires Gate across the road. Uh, left there, joined AC Blackpool. Um, just uh, just sort of fell out of love with the game a little bit. So spoke to the manager, joined back at um, AC Blackpool and just tried to find my love again and, and found it, I think. Nice, nice. Um, fantastic. And... Obviously, it's in the name, and we sort of know where it is because we've been to Squires Gate a couple of times. We know those guys. Can you tell us where the club are based and the name of the stadium? Uh, so we're based literally around the corner from Squires Gate. You'll probably have noticed um, there's three grounds quite in quite close proximity to each other. So you've got Squires Gate and then Rem Rovers next door to each other on School Road. Then we're across the road. If you were to turn... Coming past the Shovels pub, you turn left to Squires Gate, you turn right for us, and we're just next to Common Edge Playing Fields, uh, just on Jepson Way. Uh, the ground is actually called the Mechanics Ground, but I just like to call it Jepson Way. Fantastic. Excellent. And um, I take it that's where the um, the hashtag, and I take it that's the nickname, where that comes from. Is it is it the Mex? Yeah, the Mechanics. It, the club was originally called Blackpool Mechanics back in the day. Um, and that sort of stuck. The originally formed with Squiresgate Juniors uh, to create AFC Blackpool, um, losing the name Blackpool Mechanics. But uh, the mechanics has always stuck around, and, um, that's and is that on board? Is that due to the proximity to the airport? I take it. Is it? Ooh, the mechanics. good question. Not too sure. I don't know if it's. That was just a guess. It, 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 it makes sense. I don't know if, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was sort of these, you know, when you go to the Yorkshire clubs and they're like something minors welfare. I don't know if yeah. it was because it was a group of mechanics that set the, the club up or maybe I should really know that. I don't know. It's a good story. We'll stick with it. Be research. Yeah. It's a good It's a good story. We'll stick with that one. So yeah. you're on Jepson Way. Um, what is the club's record attendance? Oh, you you didn't tell me you're going to ask all these questions. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it was actually against um, FC United uh, when they were first in the league. Uh, but the game was actually played at Bloomfield Road. They did travel well. I've looked at yeah, the numbers. Because, yeah, we couldn't uh, host, well, because we knew they were going to travel well. We didn't want to host the, the game at uh, Jepson Way. Uh, I think it was around 4,000 on. Um, but not one recently, and not one we're going to beat, ladies and gentlemen. Not one we're going to beat. <laughs> um, <laughs> more recently, it was actually against Bootle a couple of years ago. There was 503 on, uh, which might be more more likely to get beat on Saturday, hopefully. Uh, it'll be a was, good, it'll be a good day, regardless, though, won't it? It's you yeah, know, that, that was mainly made up of Blackpool FC fans who were protesting, um, against 
previous owners, um, which I'm sure you know all about. Uh, and it was organised by a group called the Tangerine Knights, just to instead of all staying at home, go and support a non-league club for the day. And they all turned out against Bootle. Fantastic. Now, I understand Blackpool are at home on Saturday, aren't they, as well? Mm. So um, it's going to be busy around town, I take it, uh, leading up to yeah, kick-off. Yeah. Um, yeah. So talking about that, where would you advise any people that want to come up a bit early, have a walk up the beach, get a stick of rock, have a pint and a bite to eat before the game, where would you guide them to? Um as you know in Blackpool there's loads of different places in town um, I would probably recommend coming closer to the ground and then probably in the shovels which is around the corner which I'm sure you all know from your previous travels um, but also inside the ground we'll be opening up early we've got our, our bar in the clubhouse but we're also having an outside bar uh, which will just be like bottles and cans uh, but we'll also have a burger van as well which is from a company called Burger Hain which is like a local company which does like American style burgers that'll be going on our social media just before the game, just to give you a little taste of what they do. Uh, would recommend them. Uh, so either shovels or or get into the ground early and put some money in our tills. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. You're looking at getting a at footy scran tagged in that post on Saturday with them burgers, are you? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, um, me, me and Nathan always have a look at them and it's uh, we like to do pie ratings when we go to away games um, but some, some of them on there are a bit bit dodgy oh there was a sausage on it over the weekend and I was like yeah. looks look, no no thanks um, yeah it didn't look well that sausage it did not look well and you know the one I'm on about as well yeah, um, yeah. fantastic now moving on to AC Blackpool now we've, we've made a fact up it might not be a fact that they were formed by mechanics from the airport but other than the made up fact that we just fabricated what what interesting facts are there about the club that our fans might find interesting ooh good question um, what interesting facts have we got I don't know really any players a note fact. that have gone on to do other things or uh, not particularly. More in the in the in the last couple of years, to be honest. Uh, we've had a, a good influx of young local players that have, that have gone on to bigger and better things. Uh, more recently, Jamie Thomas went from ourselves um, and signed for Preston. Uh, he's currently on loan at Halifax in Conference. Um, we've had a couple of others. There's a young lad uh, called George Thomason. He's playing at Bolton, starting most weeks for Bolton in the in League One. We don't uh, talk those... about them. Oh, we don't no, talk okay. about them on this channel. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm only kidding. Um, the, uh, so we love we love it, everybody. Of course, <laughs> it, it's something we're we're looking at trying to progress more is trying to pick up these younger lads that have been released from an academy and um, and move them on back into the professional game, uh, which I think a lot of professional clubs are now looking to do themselves is is dig into non league more. You're seeing it more and more. And obviously, more recently, we've had Kyle White, who was playing this season, played against yourselves at uh, Radcliffe. Um, he's moved on to Fleetwood. He's, he's with the Fleetwood under-23s now. Fantastic. What, you know, though, you, you feel bad. or you, you know, it feels bad to lose a player, but when they've gone on to take such a step, you can only sort of feel proud, can't you? You know, we've, yeah, got, well, it, we've got one or two right, younger, right. younger lads that are be you know, could be being watched and we we fear that well we don't fear because they we don't know if anything's happening with them or if anyone is watching them but if anyone was watching them they'd probably be snapped up because they're fantastic the and the yeah. leagues apart from anything that i've seen it's you know it, they could have easily slotted into berry's side when they're in the football league but mm. it, it's just the, how it, how the the dice rolls for them isn't it really as, as young kids yeah it's just frustrating sometimes in non league where a lad will go and say we'll join a league above, but probably a similar standard of club. Really, you you leave in a club chasing promotion to a club that's mid table, and you think, well, what's the point, really? It, that's frustrating when they sort of move sideways. But when they're moving up a couple of levels and they're, they're moving back into the professional game, you think, well, our job's done now. It's it's time for you to go and show that you deserve it. So definitely, long may that continue. Definitely. Now, um. A few more questions revolving around the last couple of years, really. So, with the 2021 season being chalked off, well, 
chalked off. <laughs> um, promotion still happened, but we won't talk about that. Um, mm. What you know? What's it been like at AFC Blackpool over the the last couple of years? The start stop. The how, how, have you struggled to get momentum? How was it going last year before it was curtailed? Yeah, it was a bit of a frustrating year for us last year because we didn't do ourselves justice. We we did well in the in the cup competitions, well fairly well for our standard. Did got through a couple of rounds, uh, which meant that league games were then postponed to play them. Then we we members of the squad caught COVID, which then back then meant that everyone had to isolate and we had to shut down. Um, so we never really got going momentum. There's a, there's a massive thing as we both probably seen this season, um, but we never got going momentum wise and just really struggled with our form. So don't think we did ourselves justice. We've got a lot of the same squad as we had last year. Uh, so I think the lads are now wanting to prove that uh, last year was a bit of a fluke and that, that they can do better this year. Last team to take points off us, AFC Blackpool. Mm, it was a really good game. Interesting one. Yeah. How's, I really the rest, it. how's the rest of it been going for you? I know you're up there chasing for the playoff spots at the minute, aren't you? Are you in the playoff spots? I've, I've not looked at the league table today, so... Just, well, yeah, ever-changing, especially up there. Not not so much for the big boys right at the top, but for us uh, little ones in the chasing pack, it's, um, it's ever-changing. I mean, ourselves, uh, Bake Up, uh, who else is around there? Pilkington. Pilkington. There's only point, points in it. Even like Nelson, who have crept up, who were club of the month, uh, I think last month, uh, are only three points behind Pilkington in six. So and he's doing a hard. top job over there. Uh, yeah, Nelson. Definitely. Like, yeah, yeah. We, I, I, we, I thought they'd be lower mid-table. Mm. But they're, they're right up there. He's a top bloke as well, Andy. Yeah, we played him... Uh, Two weeks ago, the Beatles. The, I mean, we were poor on the day, but they looked decent. They, they made made the chances count and uh, did did the right stuff in the right areas. Um, it's just frustrating uh, our, our season so far. I think it's fair to say when we've been good, we've been really good. When we've been bad, we've we've gone through spells. So it's it's a case of the moment. You you sort of coming in at full time and going right. How did these do? How did these do? Are we are we game points where are we are we looking over our shoulder more or so it's one of them it's the old cliche of taking one game at a time and we'll just see in another month's time where we're at and see how we can improve definitely um, it is very close that chasing pack for the the playoffs isn't it uh, I mean we got well we I got a little bit excited on Tuesday night after we won and after Golka dropped points thinking oh we've only got a win for now but then I didn't realise that. Holker, I've got two games in hand, so they can they can technically get above Golka and yeah, so it's yeah. Si- sixteen points we need now. Um, sorry to anyone that I told it was only twelve points. Uh, <laughs> t- so yeah, I mean, talk about this year. You won what six one on in your last game, was it? Yeah, we did. So, yeah, in form, in form. Then at the minute, found the the uh, goal scoring well, boots. Our, our first win in three games. I think we struggled to. Last couple of games, um, played really well, created the chances, just really struggled to put them away. Really struggled, and we've come up against sides that just know where the net is at the moment and can just something's going in off a bum and off a shin. And it, yeah. there's been those sort of games where it's not really falling for us. Uh, Saturday, credit to St. Ellen's, they kept going, uh, they did really well. Obviously, they're struggling this year, but. Heads didn't drop. I mean, the centre half went down injured and carried on playing with what looked like a dislocated shoulder for the next twenty five minutes. So that's the sort of spirit you need uh, in those sort of situations. But um, lads did well, and hopefully, it's a bit of a, a confidence boost for them coming into this game. Yeah, I mean, he's he's not looking good for St Helens, and what a lovely club we enjoyed our trip over there. Um, I mean, it's like Paul St Martins in the south that they could get relegated this weekend. They lose. That's right. Yeah, they're down. Yeah, but that they, they they've had a, t- a, a turbulent season. Though I think they lost thirteen players at one point, and a yeah. management change. So if, I don't know. It's just a bad season all round. And you chalk it off and you try again next year, don't you? Yeah. Well, it's a place to go if you want to see goals scored. Though conceded, yeah. one hundred and sixty odd. Yeah. Yeah. 
definitely. Making all the other teams in that league look fantastic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I've got a couple more questions for you. Um, I think I know who it is, the lad that scored against us, but who's you want to watch? Uh, the lad that scored against you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely Jacob. Um, he's a he's a cut above the rest for us. He's a really really good player. When he's confident, he's um he'll take it in his stride, and he's a good lad around the dressing room as well. He's played at a higher level. He's a local lad that, like a lot of us, like I said earlier, fell out of love with the game a little bit. So he's just come in, Martin Noom, um, growing up, um, through friends of friends. Just come to enjoy himself a bit, uh, which he's doing. I've no doubt we'll probably lose him at the end of the season, but while we've got him, make the most of it and uh, hopefully he can cause a bit of havoc down that right-hand side on Saturday. It's not always the case, though, is it? Sometimes the, the loyalty factor does does come into play. Um, I hope so. It's it's the case of staying around here, staying local and knowing you can get home in 20 minutes after a home game or yeah. do, you, do you travel an hour and and not be home until 7, 8 o'clock at night? It's, it's, it depends what you're in it for. Definitely. Now, um, I'm not going to ask you your thoughts on Berry ahead of the match because we've already played each other. We know what we're expecting. It's going to be, I think it's going to be end-to-end attacking both teams. I think there's going to be a fair few goals. Now I've said that, it's going to be a nil-nil draw. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to ask you, these are more, um, two questions I've got. These are more just about non-league football in general. Who is the best player you've seen in non-league football yourself? Because obviously you've been around it a bit, being at Squires Gate, being at Blackpool. Got to have been one that stood out. Yeah, we had, when I was at Squires Gate, there was a young lad called Jack Sowerby who went on from Squires Gate and moved to Fleetwood. Uh, I think he's now playing at Northampton. Uh, But he's a young lad released by Preston. Uh, They played him up front. And oh my god, anything he hit just turned to gold. He just scored, I think, maybe 35, 40 goals one season. I think it was the season he moved actually. But just a really fit young lad that just knew what he wanted. He knew what to get back into the professional game and just did everything that was asked of him and scored some really good goals. I can remember going away to Runcorn Town one Saturday and you think, oh, bit of a tough, tough place to go. At top side at that at that time of the season, uh, we ended up beating them seven two, I think. And he, the front three were on fire, and he was he was leading them. So probably Jack. Um, there's been some great ones. It's we're blessed in Blackpool to have previous managers that uh, across Squires Gate and AFC Blackpool currently that give chances to younger players. And I think there's nothing better than seeing younger players play and thrive. Well, that's like the same for us with the gaffer. Lewis Gilboy has been just phenomenal for us. Mm. Um, fantastic. He picked up a knock a while back and we thought he was going to be out, but he's just that set on his game and that fit that he, he just brushed it off and he's back. Um, mm. And Abs, our other winger, they're just a cut above. Mm. It's just like, wow. Um, yeah. right, my final question for you is... I used to ask what you thought the score prediction was going to be. Um, rubbish question. That let's not ask that again. Um, I think I think we I, th- I think we we'll not drop um, drop points, but we might have drew the last time I uh, yeah drop points the last time I asked it uh, for an away game. So the question is, what's the one thing you would say to those that haven't been to watch the local non-league side to convince them to come and give it a go? Uh, I think there's a lot of preconceptions about non-league that it's big, overweight guys pumping it long on a, a crap, muddy pitch uh, with one man and his dog stood around watching. It, it's That's not no like way that. to talk about Holger old boys. <laughs> Don't Go on, can, like can, carry on. <laughs> I'm joking, we'll I'm joking. we there soon as well. I'll get lynched when I'm walking. I'm, I didn't say that, not me. I'm joking. <laughs> Go on, carry on. Um, there's there's a lot of talent like we've like we've spoke about in the game, especially at that level. Don't don't believe that it's all old men that have fallen out of the game. There's a lot of fun to be had. There's a lot of good banter on the sidelines. You can have a drink, you can have a pie, 
you can sit in the clubhouse after the game and talk to the manager, talk to the players. That's what I love about it is the interaction you get. You'd never get that if you were at Bloomfield Road or Gig Lane or places like that. It, it just wouldn't happen. It just doesn't happen. You're just uh, so detached, give, aren't you? That you just yeah. that when you get to that, yeah, you're just so detached world. from it. Yeah, I'd, I'd say just give it a go. That's what I did. I I went down when Blackpool were away once and never really looked back. Still go back to Blackpool, but uh, really, really enjoy being involved and get involved. It, yeah. It's 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 nice to volunteer. It's nice to give something back. And it's always nice to see progress. And when it's going well, it's a, it's a great feeling. Excellent. No, that summed it up really well. Another thing you get to do as a volunteer is come on excellent web shows like this and speak to idiots like me. Thank you very much for coming on, Mark. It's Super, been a pleasure. No and I will see Absolutely. you on Saturday. Big thanks to Mark Ashmore for coming on the Shaking Up Show playing away this week and telling us what to expect on our trip up to AFC Blackpool. So, yeah, if you are joining me for a sticker rock and a donkey ride on the beach, tickets are available. Um, We'll put the link in the description. They released another 150 today, as was said in the video, I think. Um, I'll say it now. Um, They're looking at probably limiting it to about 1,000. If you want a drink before, get in the shovels. And, yeah, I will see you there.